All right, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Five Minute Machine Learning, where we learn a little bit of machine learning techniques in hopefully under five minutes. Today, we're going to be learning a little bit of decision trees in R. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. The package we're going to use today is Party and R Part. The data set we're going to use is the beloved Iris data set. All right, let's look at the Iris data set. So the dim dimension of it is 150 by five. So it has 150 records and five columns. And then four of them, the first four of them are independent variables with the last one being species, which in our case is the target variable. And we have three species. Now the decision tree is a supervised machine learning techniques, meaning the labels of the target variables are none to the algorithm for it to learn so we train the algorithm on the labeled records for it to predict the unknown records in the future all right so our first tree i'm going to call it tree one it's going to be using c tree function from the package party let's train it all right let's plot it briefly all right I brought it up for you previously so let's take a look so the first decision node we look at the pedal lengths and then if it's less than or equal to 1.9 it belongs to Satosa otherwise we go into the second decision node where we look at the pedal widths if it is less than or equal to 1.7 then chances are it's a versicolor and if not it could be the third species all right that's the preliminary results it's just that simple. All right, looking at the second package, we'll be looking at our part package. And then also we're gonna be using the plot function from the package. Now let's train our second tree. I'll call it tree two. So it's the R part. We will look at the species as our target variable and this tilde means we're gonna use all of the independent variables. And then the data is iris. And let's plot it. Again, we have a, a little bit of color for plot here. With the first step, we look at the pedal lengths, and then the second, we look at the pedal widths. As you can see, the detail of the algorithm is a little bit different than the previous one. But the reason of that goes beyond the scope of this video, so I won't, I won't go into detail of it. But different packages implies different algorithms to keep that in mind. All right, next. The decision trees are highly sensitive to the input data structure. If we just alter the input data just by a tiny little bit, the outcome could be very different. Now let's look into an example. Still using our iris data set, this time we're going to just take three columns. We're going to keep the sepal length and the sepal width, also our target variables. Let's bring up this customized function first. Alright, and then let's subset the iris data set to call it x and then for our third tree i call it tree three and then the data we're going to use is x so only two independent variables now let's plot the decision boundary for our tree three all right let's look at it so we're look what we are looking at here is that we have three species of the iris flower represented by three different symbols, triangle, a plus sign, and a blue cross. All right, and then the decision boundary here is also plotted. Now this is for the original iris dataset. Now let's just alter the dataset a little bit. Let's make a new dataset called X2. And then for the 54th row and then third column of X2, let's just name it Satosa, all right? And then if we check whether x and x2 are all equal, then we're seeing a one string mismatch. That's the exact record we just messed around. All right, now let's train the fourth tree using the R part function. All right, this time the data set's gonna be x2. Plot the boundary again. Let's look at the boundary. All right, so this is the decision boundary for the original Iris data set. And now this, is the new decision boundary for the altered iris data set look at how different they are 
And the only thing that has been changing is this little symbol. We changed it from the green plus sign to the triangle. So that's how the decision tree is going to react to this sing single data point change. Well, you might ask, how are we going to mitigate the risk that a single decision tree is very sensitive to its input data? Well, in techniques such as bagging boosting, typically there are tens of thousands of different decision trees that will be used. And each single one of them are slightly different. We can control how different they are by tuning some of the hyperparameters, for example, column rates and sample rates. We could carefully tune those hyperparameters that when we come to the final results, we use the majority vote of all of the decision trees. In that case, we will be able to mitigate some of the risks. But for now, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And as always, have a nice day.